In this episode, Golden and I discuss Moon Knight. Full speed ahead. The Omega Beam. Full power. The Omega Beam. Welcome to the Omega Beam number 171. I'm your host, Oren Merton. So there's another Marvel show now streaming in its entirety on Disney+. Plus. It's called Moon Knight, starring Oscar Isaac as the Moon Knight in question. We start our conversation spoiler-free, for those who haven't seen it yet, and we'll give you ample warning before we go into spoilers. So let's get into it. I am here with Golden to talk about Moon Knight, the latest Marvel MCU series streaming on Disney+. Plus. It is a six-episode limited series. I, I guess there might be a second season, but everybody involved kind of said that it was a limited series. So I, I, well, yeah, that's it's questionable. There's been some talk. I and if it is not a limited series, it takes it out of running for some awards. Interesting. Yeah, I guess that's true. I think that the character of Moon Knight is certainly going to continue. Well, the, the fact that it teased that there may be a second season, according to an article that I was reading, was saying that people are wondering if it's going to be taken out of the some of the awards as a limited series. Yeah, well, I guess I guess we'll find out. So... For those who aren't familiar, Moon Knight is one of Marvel's lesser-known characters. He has been around for a long time, though. I personally knew of Moon Knight from some teen books I had read that he was in, and then in, I think, 2013, Warren Ellis did a very short run of Moon Knight, although in his run, Moon Knight was really a character called Mr. Knight, who rode around in limos and didn't have the kind of cowl and robes. He's the one who had this smooth face mask and white suit. And they brought that into the series. Yeah, they did. So they brought in Warren Ellis' Mr. Knight, although the personality is totally different and what he does. And this is really its own story. You don't need to know the Moon Knight comic. I didn't know. I just knew that there was a comic because yeah. a friend of mine had a friend that really enjoyed them and collected them. And when I came right. across a couple, we passed them on to him. So how did you like the series? It was very good. It was very different. And I think that Disney slash Marvel is really hitting upon different. Mm-hmm. Because WandaVision was different. Right. And then you had Loki, which Which was was also different. And you, I mean, Falcon and Winter Soldier, okay, that's, that's kind of more the Marvel thing. But those three series right now are just hitting upon something that goes into different areas that we didn't necessarily expect a Marvel series to go. And, and this one is as disoriented or disorienting. As the main character. Yeah. At uh, times, yeah. Mark, Mark Spector, the, the character who is Moon Knight, has disassociative identity disorder, I think yes. is the official name. What yes. We used to call multiple personalities. And it's not like he's the only either handicapped or challenged or whatever superhero that's ever been. What an interesting concept. And this is exists in the comics as well. It's not just the series. But what an interesting concept. When a person has one personality aware of its superpowers and its mission and others that aren't. Well, one personality is aware of the other personality. Yeah. But the second one is not. And the and you know, third one. Yeah, you know. And I don't think saying there's a third one is really giving away anything because into the second or third episode. Right. You are aware that Mark thinks that Stephen did something. Stephen thinks Mark did something. Right. And neither one of them has figured out that it wasn't the other one. So I, other I, one. I apologize if I threw in a little spoiler for the in the non-spoiler section, but the thing is, is that there are scenes of that personality that are in the trailer and if you do happen to know the comic, then you already know this. Yeah, as far as you can go in terms of no spoiler is, this is a great cast. Everyone really fills the part extremely well. Right. It's a strong story, and it takes you places that you didn't know existed. One of the things that I think is worth... Unless you've read the comics. Yeah. 
One of the things that I think is worth saying is that they were able to get, you know, the main cast is not very large. It's a, it's a, a woman whose name I don't remember, but who Mate is... Calloway? Yeah, that, that's right. Who is a, a wonderful Egyptian actress. Really, Calloway. really wonderful Egyptian act actress. It's got Ethan Hawke. It's got Oscar Isaac. And these people are firing on all thrusters. They are really doing a fantastic job. And you can see why people who don't normally do television like this were gravitated towards it because these are real characters, real meaty, three-dimensional characters with rich internal lives. And one of, the, I mean, this is an incredibly well-reviewed series, but one of the, and with a very high Rotten Tomatoes, but I think 83 or something, 87, whatever. But one of the criticisms from some of the Marvel fans is that there's not enough punchy punchy, that this isn't enough of an action show. It's more internal. But for those who really like the characters, I think that rich internal life really gives this show, like you were saying, it, ta it takes it somewhere else and it turns it into something else. And it's, it's great. I love the fact that they did that and didn't just make it, oh, he's got a cool costume. Let's go beat everything up. I mean, this is not that show. You know, you will find criticisms on the internet. Oh, this episode didn't have much Moon Knight in it. Well, no, because the part of the story they were telling was about, you know, the mark or whatever. Yeah, it has an eight, as of this conversation, it's an 87% from critics and 92% for audience. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's really, really good. And of course, as with all Marvel television shows on Disney+, Plus, the effects are wonderful. The soundtrack, the score was done by an Egyptian artist. I believe this is his first Western score and it's, it's wonderful. So the series takes place mostly in Egypt, starts in London, moves to Egypt and the music is mostly Egyptian. It's really, really wonderful. I mean, it's, it's got all the polish you expect. The acting is great. The story is great. There's, there's really very little to criticize, as I said, if you're looking for just another action series, this is probably not what you're looking for. But if you are looking for something with characters that you can really sink your teeth into and that deals with issues like DID and things you don't normally see a superhero type series oh, deal this with. This is the only, not the only series that we've watched with, with Doom Patrol. Right. Also, right. But hers is a little bit more extensive in terms of how many personalities. Right. And that's also played as as much for, you know, kind of over the top and yeah. comedy, you know. But this is, yeah, it's. This is much tried to be much more grounded in how how Mark. So was. there there will be spoilers. Just let's just say spoilers. One, two, three. There we go. Here we okay, are. Spoilers, so, everybody. So, I mean, a lot of this is. This limited series is Mark and Steven figuring out how to work with one another. Right. How to accept one another, how to be there for one another and share the body. Right. And it's 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 beautiful how the two of them come together because ultimately there is a human being is born with a single personality, but they split early on in his life because of trauma. And when they kind of go internal and realize it, they both begin to understand each other. And, and they kind of both save each other. Yes. I think one of the most beautiful things that Mark says is the only superpower I ever really had was you talking to Steven. And that's a wonderful understanding that the neurodiversity that is so challenging. Well, he was for saving him. him. Yeah. It's so challenging for him to live with. It is his salvation. When, when life was really painful. Yeah. Stephen was his savior. Yeah. And I really like there's a part where Stephen starts to feel like he can't keep up and things are becoming overwhelming because these people are attacking him. And he realizes, wait a minute. Nah, if Mark knows how to do this. Right. Then I can do that. Right. There is that moment where he realizes, wait, we both have the same muscle memory because we we're the can same have the body. Same skill. Yeah. And, and that's when he opens himself up. And, and that is ultimately one of the great victories and, and one of the, you know, sort of fist in the air aha moments is when, you know, Stephen's personality realizes that he can access all of that. 
that he can that be a can't superhero mark too. access all of the knowledge that Stephen. He'd need to come to the realization. And if, yeah. and if he does come to that realization, do we start to lose the separation between Stephen and Mark? Don't know. But then, of course, since we're in the spoiler section, you know, for those of us in the comics, we already knew that Jake Lockley is the third personality. Now, everything is different in, in the, from the comics. Because in the comics, Mark is Mark. He is a mercenary still. Stephen Grant, I think he was a billionaire, but he also, he was brutal. Yeah, this Stephen's not a billionaire. No, he was brutal. He was the one who was just, just ruthless. And Jake Lockley was a, just a cab driver. And they flipped it all for the series. You know, they, they went their own direction, which I think was wonderful. I, I, well, no, yeah, Mark is a mercenary, a but he has a conscience. Right. Steven is the yeah. mild, timid bookworm. Right. And then Jake Lockley, Nerd. whom we only see, we see him a little bit, you know, he's never named in the first one, in the first episode, but we see what is probably the damage he left behind. And then as, as the series rolls on, we, 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 we see, see him even do more, more, damage, more, yeah. more damage. And then finally, in the after credit scene, he is introduced by name. Yeah, because, um, you know, if two-thirds of you has agreed to something, right? is it still binding if the last part of you has not? Right. I also like how they kind of set up that maybe Mark does know about Jake, but doesn't want to. Because when he's shot. Yeah. And he, he's... In the afterlife. In the afterlife. Septorium. Yeah. So he he sees the sarcophagus with Stephen. Yes. And he immediately opens it. But then he sees the sarcophagus of another personality. He looks at it, but he chooses not so to open it. So you think that he knows what's He knows it. there's... Maybe if he doesn't... He may not know, hi, I'm Jake. But he definitely knows, okay, this is that other thing that's dark and when we both black out and don't know what's know. going on. If he, or if he just thinks it's a, something behind a closed door. Yeah, maybe. But then again, he does try to keep Stephen from going through a lot of doors. Right, because he doesn't want, he, he as he said, you know. He thinks he doesn't want. As he says at one point, I created you to not see all of this. And... You know, now that Stephen gets to see it all, ultimately it is what allows him to save Mark. But at, you know, the young Mark who, who sort of fizzled out and created Stephen, it was to avoid all of that. So it's an interesting fantasy look at DID that is attempting to be grounded. And meanwhile, at the same time, there is this more traditional adventure story going on where the Ethan Hawke character is trying to release Amit, an Egyptian god, who's basically going to punish people before they've committed the crime. Whereas Moon Knight works for Khonshu, he is Khonshu's Moon Knight, who wants to stop Amit specifically because he believes you only punish them after the fact. And there's a little bit of a philosophical battle between the two humans, the two avatars, Moon Amit. Knight. Huh? Amit. Yeah. Moon Knight on the one side, Harrow on the other, with Harrow saying, if you stop people before they do the bad thing then the bad thing never happens. Whereas Moon Knight, you know, Mark or Stevens turns around and says, yeah, but then you're punishing an innocent person. And that is an interesting philosophical question because until the moment the crime happens, it is always possible that somehow someone will make the choice not to do it or to stop the crime. Sounds like another sci-fi movie we could make. Oh, <laughs> they did. They did. You know, it's an interesting, it's an interesting story that's a little more philosophical. There is good action. I mean, I, I know that some people were critical that there was not enough action, but even if every episode wasn't all about the stunts, there were some action scenes, especially in the conclusion. I thought that final fight where Mr. Knight, the more polished Stephen Grant superhero, and Moon Knight, the more mercenary Mark Spector superhero, were literally switching off 
between punches. They were and so, Layla. And Leia. Oh, man. They, well, her character all throughout the, it was very capable. Well, yes. And I know that the the Egyptian director and his wife, was also Egyptian, was consulting producer. And they were very excited that they were allowed to bring in, uh, I think her name was the Scarlet Scarab, is technically the superhero name of Layla, Mark Spector's wife. And I believe that this character in the comics, actually, like, I think from the 70s, but it's a man. It was, they gender bent the the Marvel superhero to make her a superhero, but it was meaningful. It made sense in story. It was great in story. And it allowed for this amazing moment where you had this wide-eyed Egyptian girl just looking at her and saying in, in, in Arabic, are you an Egyptian superhero? And she just looks at her and, and sort of this self-realization comes over and she says, I am. It was very, very cool and very meaningful. As I said in the spoiler-free section, they, they kept the gist of the character. They kept the DID, they, then obviously the Moon Knight. They did an amazing job with the costume. They kept his heritage, which was nice, you know, and in... In the comics, he's a very Jewish character. Mark Spector, that that person, the main sort of root personality is. Not so much in this one, but they kept it in, a, in, a, in I think, a very well-integrated way. They kept all the Egyptian mythology, which was beautiful. They kept the relationship between Mark and Layla, which becomes a relationship between Stephen and Layla in a beautiful way. And it's, it's a deeper series. And I think it, it was really, really good. Not that all of the Marvel series weren't deeper. Like Golden said, WandaVision was all about grief and it was amazingly deep. Loki may not quite have been as deep emotionally because it was all about the multiverse and sort of the, the kind of wacky out there stuff. But this is another one uh, uh, kind of more along the WandaVision lines to the point that sometimes you wonder, wait, is all of this just in his head or is it happening or what's going on? But it's, it's a really fun series. It's a engaging series, great writing, great acting. There will be some fights. Don't worry. So Wikipedia, mm -hmm. Scarlet Scarab. Cool. Characters. So yeah, definitely. If you if you have seen this, I hope you enjoyed it as much as as we did. It's it's absolutely it's not, worth it. It's not a light-hearted ride. Yeah. It is very deep in terms of really looking at someone who is struggling with their identity and trying to have a successful relationship with those around them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Golden. You're welcome. And that's it for this episode. You can find the show notes at theomegabeam.com slash 171. If you liked this episode, please leave a review wherever you listen to podcasts. Your reviews help people who like this stuff find our podcast. If you have any comments or suggestions, please drop us a line at info at theomegabeam.com. Be good to yourselves and each other, and we'll catch you next time. The Omega Beam. Full stop.